Hello everyone, welcome back to my YouTube channel Unfog with Dr. Atahar Parvin. In this session, we are going to discuss the science pedagogy most expected questions and uh, this will be the part 3 lecture on this part. And uh, of course, this class will be very much useful for Karnataka TET, TGT, HSTR, GPSTR and uh, all other teacher entrance exams and teacher recruitment examinations. Okay. So, if you have not subscribed to my channel, please do subscribe right now. And also, if you like my work, please do like my videos and also share among your friends and other aspirants. Okay. So, let us start this session's uh, important multiple choice questions. So, the first question of this session is, which of the following is an example of an open-ended question in a science classroom? So, four options are given. You have to find out which one is an open-ended question. So, what is the capital of France? Define photosynthesis. Why does a rainbow form after rain? List the planets in our solar system. So, by reading the options, one thing which comes in our mind is, specific answers are there for capital of France, definition of photosynthesis and list of planets. But option C, why does a rainbow form after rain is a different type of question and these type of questions are known as open-ended questions which require some thoughtful responses and uh, these type of questions only encourage the learners to think deeply because anyone can answer these uh, questions option A, option B and option D but option C cannot be answered by everyone, everyone or anyone because this needs some thoughtful uh, process in order to give the response for this type of a question. So, such type of questions are known as open-ended questions. Okay. So, what is the thoughtful uh, response you will uh, need to answer this question? It is uh, that first uh, white light will be coming from the sun and it will fall on the water droplet their refraction takes place dispersion takes place total internal reflection takes place again that light ray again it come back from the uh, drop by touching the uh, surface of the drop and again refraction happens and then the rainbow is seen by us that is the observer okay so these type of questions are known as open ended questions okay so Option C will be the correct answer for this question. Next question. How can a teacher encourage scientific curiosity among students? The options are by providing all answers in advance, by discouraging questions, by limiting hands-on activities, by nurturing questions and exploration. So, how can a teacher encourage scientific curiosity among the students? It is by nurturing questions and exploration because uh, the teacher would always like to encourage the curiosity which involves the fostering the environment. Here questioning and exploration are more valued and uh, thereby the learners will have a chance to explore the scientific concepts and uh, thereby there is increase in curiosity among the students which is a very good sign in order to understand the conceptual parts in science. Okay, so option D by nurturing questions and exploration is the correct answer. Next question, what does zone of proximal development ZPT mean in science education? So, what does this ZPT mean? It means that uh, the range of tasks a student can't do alone, but it, he or she can do with the help. Okay, with the help. That help can be given by other students or by the teacher. So, this is known as zone of proximal development, ZPT. So, this actually refers to the tasks a student can't do independently but can achieve that same task with guidance. Okay. So, mostly this guidance is given by the 
teacher okay so this is a expected question and it is very important question so better know at least the full form of zpd it is zone of proximal development okay next question a teacher uses real life problems to teach scientific concepts what teaching approach is being employed so a teacher is using real life problems to teach the scientific concepts the approach which is being employed by the teacher is a inquiry based learning so this involves using real world problems to engage students in the learning process okay so uh, right from the first class i mean to say uh, from the previous two classes we are always coming across this term rote memorization or rote learning right so i thought that it's better you all know what it actually is so rote memorization means nothing but by hearting okay rote learning or rote memorization deals with the by hearting like a, a children by heart the rhymes they don't know the meaning they are just by hearting okay even we used to do the same thing in our school right that uh, english poems or hindi poems or kannada poems we used to just by heart and there used to be one examination of a reading and recitation that day we used to read a part of a lesson and also the teacher would ask us to recite the poem we don't know the meaning we have just uh, by hearted we are going to recite that poem okay so that is known as rote memorization okay basically it is a process of learning just by repeating information without fully understanding that information okay so this basically involves memorizing through repetition and recall often we are doing this by by hearting this is done without knowing the meaning of that part okay so coming back to the option the correct answer to this question is a inquiry based learning because this is the one which involves a uh, usage of real world problems in order to engage students in the learning process the teacher always approaches this type of learning okay next question a teacher uses storytelling to explain scientific phenomena what strategy is being employed four options are there memorization rote learning storytelling approach narrative pedagogy so the answer to this question is a narrative pedagogy so narrative pedagogy is one way wherein the teacher uses the concept of storytelling to explain the scientific phenomena to the students okay next question what is the primary goal of integrating technology into science teaching so what is the main goal of uh, usage of integrating technology especially in teaching science the options are replacing traditional teaching methods making the teaching process complex enhancing engagement and understanding saving time in the curriculum so the correct option for this question is uh, enhancing engagement and understanding because the technology can make learning more interactive and appealing so this is the integrated technology which is enhancing the engagement and understanding among the students related to the scientific concepts okay here option c enhancing engagement and understanding is the correct answer for this question next question what is the primary focus of using the 5e model in science teaching so what is this 5e model this 5e model is nothing but engage explore explain elaborate and evaluate so this is a very important question okay so the 5e model which includes engaging exploring explaining elaborating and evaluating guides the teaching through these phases by promoting active engagement and deeper understanding of the concepts among the learners okay next question a teacher provides the students with opportunities to reflect on their learning progress what aspect of teaching is being emphasized so the question is teacher provides the students with opportunities to reflect on their learning progress 
so what is the aspect of teaching which is being used here so the correct answer is a self directed learning because this gives the scope for reflection and reflection encourages students to take ownership of their learning okay that's why teacher is emphasizing the self directed learning here next question what is the significance of using cooperative learning in science education so cooperative learning is a uh, very important when it comes to science education why is it so what is the significance what is the importance the importance is that it enhances the collaboration and uh, communication skills because cooperative learning is usually uh, a team work and it also increases the communication among the learners with each other and also with the teacher okay so option c is the correct answer next question how can a teacher support students intrinsic motivation in science learning by relying solely on external rewards by providing irrelevant activities by offering choices and autonomy by using only summative assessments so the correct option is uh, by offering choices and autonomy because this is uh, uh, like allowing students to make choices by promoting their sense of ownership and uh, motivation in learning so that's why teacher always supports students intrinsic motivation especially when it comes to science learning okay okay friends these were the very very important questions based on science pedagogy if you have not watched the session 1 and session 2 then please do watch session 1 session 2 and uh, of course this present session is session 3 these three sessions include all the important uh, multiple choice questions from science pedagogy part okay then thank you all the best bye